Welcome to our JavaScript web course. In this video, I will cover chaining an if-else conditional statement. Let's first review a simple if-else. If the condition inside the parentheses is true, the code inside the curly braces will execute. If that condition is not true, then the code inside the curly braces for the else will execute. I would like to emphasize that we are testing one condition. And it is common in an application to have multiple if statements, but they would be testing different things that are not related. Supposing we wanted to test some information that was related, and we wanted to look at multiple conditions. So here we have an if-else statement with multiple else if conditions. And you can have as many of these as you like. We start with the first condition inside the if. If this condition is not true, then we'll look at the next condition. If that condition is not true, then we'll look at the next condition, and on and on. Finally, if none of the conditions are true, then the code inside the else will execute. Here we are testing for multiple conditions. I would also like to emphasize when the first true occurs, meaning the first condition returns true, JavaScript exits this block of code. It does not read any further. Therefore, if you have a true further on, it's never going to get there. So make sure that you test every condition to make sure that there are no logical errors in your code. In order to demonstrate how to use this in a more realistic setting, we will evaluate the age of a user and put them into one of five categories, child, youth, teen, adult. So here I have an age range, one to six for a child, 7 to 12 for a youth, 13 to 18 for a teen, 19 to 30 for an adult. I stopped at 30 because we are generating a random number and it would make it easier to generate a number for every category. So if you think about it, we're going to have a comparison operator between two values. And I'm generating a random number so that every time I reload the page, I can test my application because there will be a new number that we're using to compare. And notice that I am writing two things on the page. I am writing the value of the number and I am writing the name of the category. So let's look at this file. Here in the body section, we have a placeholder with an ID value. That is where we will be placing the output of this application. At the end of the body section, we are accessing this element and setting the inner HTML property to a variable called result. So the value of result will be placed inside the opening and closing P element with ID equals display. Our JavaScript is in the head section. So first, I have the code to declare a random number, and we will be learning how to do this eventually in this course. I also have console.log statements inside every one of my conditions, just so that I can test it also in the console. So we have a value being stored in this variable num. That value is coming from the random number. It will be between 1 and 30. So what we will be doing is analyzing that number to determine whether it's between two different numeric values. First, we will test for a child. That is between the number 1 to 6. So here's my if condition. If num 
greater than or equal to 1 and num less than or equal to 6. We have learned how to use comparison and logical operators in the previous class. I would like to point out that when you compare these numbers, you repeat the variable on both sides of the logical operator. So we have num greater than or equal to 1 and num less than or equal to 6. So this is the numeric range for a child. If the number is between or equal to one of these values, the code inside the curly braces will execute because the condition is true. Therefore, we are going to set the result. And here we have a concatenation with a string and a variable. Your age is, and remember num is coming from the random number. That is the number that we're evaluating our range. And we're also concatenating it with, and you are a child, which is the category. If that condition is not true, we go to the next condition. We have else if. Now we're comparing for a youth, and the range is 7 to 12. So in our parentheses, we have num greater than or equal to 7, and num greater than or equal to 12. And if this is true, the code inside the curly braces will execute, and we will set a value for the variable result, which will be displayed inside the body section. Notice in this example, I am using a template literal rather than pure concatenation just to show you and remind you that when you're working with variables and string data, that sometimes a template literal is easier to use. So if this does not return true, we go on to the next else if condition. Now we're testing for a teen, 13 to 18. So in my parentheses, num greater than or equal to 13 and num less than or equal to 18. If this condition is true, the value for the variable result will be set. And remember, first time JavaScript encounters a true, it does not read any further. However, if this is not true, then we go on to the next else if. If none of the above are true, the code inside the curly braces connected to the final else will execute. Let's go over this code to see if there is a more efficient way to accomplish this. We want to tell the user what their age is and what the age category is, child, youth, teen, adult. So we are storing the expression in a variable, but notice we are repeating a lot of information. Your age is, and you are. Your age is, and you are. Whenever you see that you're repeating code, the chances are there's a more efficient way of doing that to minimize the amount of code being written. So rather than storing the whole expression in a variable and then displaying the result on the page, we can actually place the whole expression right here as the value for inner HTML. All we need are two variables. So if we were to use this expression, your age is concatenated with num, concatenated and you are, all we need is another variable to hold the category. So in our JavaScript code, we can initialize a variable for the category. And then in the if statement, rather than writing a long expression, all we need to do is to assign a value for that variable. So if the first condition is true, the category is child. If the second condition is true, the category is youth. If the next condition is true, the category is teen. If the next condition is true, the category is adult. If none of the conditions are true, the category is unknown. We already have the value for the variable num, and all we're doing is determining what the category is using our if-else conditional chaining. 
So all we need to do is use those two variables in an expression to be displayed on the web page. Using an if, else if, else if, else if can be very hard to work with and hard to debug and is not recommended in a professional setting. An easier alternative is to use the switch statement. The switch statement does exactly the same thing as a chained if else. It allows us to evaluate multiple conditions and based on that condition being true to execute code. There is less code to write and it is easier to see. So here we have the exact same scenario. We are generating the random number and based on the number we are determining the age categories. So here we have the switch statement and because we are evaluating the conditions if you remember, the conditional and logical operators return true or false. When the first condition is evaluated to true, the switch statement stops. So here we have our first condition or case. And if that returns true, we set the category. Notice the syntax is a little different. Rather than using the curly braces, we have a colon at the end of the condition, we also have a break at the end with a semicolon. Here is our second condition or case for youth, our third condition or case for teen, our next condition or case for adult, and finally we have a default, meaning none of the above are true. When I test this code in the browser, we see it is accomplishing the same results as the previous examples. I would like to show you another way that some developers might approach this type of application. And I am doing that using the switch statement example. In the last couple examples, we have been storing a string value for the category. Rather than doing that, you may see developers setting up constants for the different categories which would contain those string values. In some situations, you may be working with identifiers that already exist and it makes sense to continue to use them in your application. So here we are just setting the value for category equal to another value However, this value is a constant, which is essentially a variable, but it cannot be changed. 